Welcome to a new episode in our YouTube channel. My name is Simon and for the last 10 years I've been helping online sellers with their sourcing and their shipping from China. We're super grateful and thankful for the 4.9 score that we have on the Shopify App Store. So check us out there if you have the time. Please do follow our Facebook, our YouTube, our Instagram. We have tons of value and content there and I really like it that how we communicate with you. Today's episode is all about you and we have had many insights over the past years about how to optimize your supply chain. We want to build a sustainable and seamless supply chain for online sellers. Not just the big ones, but also the small ones. And that's something that we're passionate about and that's why we deliver content to you in our channel. We normally have a, a tons of videos. We have had interviews with really large logistics suppliers like UnExpress. We had a tour through the warehouse where you can actually see all the steps of the whole process. And we recently launched a VAT video about the impact of the VAT regulations that are coming in the EU. So please do check it out, follow us, subscribe, and we're sure that you will get tons of content of the information that we're sharing with you basically. Today we're going to talk about how do you customize and build your brand. We put a question out there in our community on how we, what content you would like from us to see. And the main thing that came out was on how to customize and build a brand for dropshippers that want to send out of China. That's what this episode is all about. This is what we're going to share the content for for today. In the end, we, you, we see that this kind of idea that everyone wants to sell online and want to build their brand. And a few of them, they started to do it in the most perfect way possible. They built the brand online, offline, perfect pictures, storyline, everything. But then there's no sales. That's why it's very important to break it down into phases. Phases of the product life cycle. So you know when to start what kind of branding or customization. That's what we're going to share today. Before I go into these four phases, I want to share your options. When you're going to do customization and branding, basically there are four options to consider. The most easy one is a thank you card. That's just a card you add to every order and it says a, a personal message that you would like to share. The second one is shipping packaging. Shipping packaging is all the orders that you're going to put into an envelope, in our case an envelope or a box, that you would like to ship it out in a branded experience. The third option is product packaging. You put your logo or your design on a product packaging that is different from the current one of the supplier. And the last one, that's the optimum one, is to put your logo on the product. Basically, depending on where you are in the product life cycle, you will have to uh, have to different options and normally starting with thank you card all the way up to having a brand on the product. Now to go to the product life cycle. There are four phases. It's not that we invented it. This is already existing for many, many years. Basically starts with an introduction, an introduction phase. Then you go into growth. Then you go into maturity. And then the last one is the decline. Each of these phases have their own strategy. For us, the strategy when it comes to the introduction phase the easiest way is a thank you card. Just adding a thank you card in each order. The only thing you basically have to do is come up with the design, with the, the language you want to do that, and the content you would wish to share. Most people using a discount code or are using uh, some kind of other promotional products just to be able to grab the attention and create some customer loyalty. When it comes to your growth, once you start to grow, we recommend you to optimize your shipping packaging. Shipping packaging is suitable for this stage because when you're introducing, you don't have, um, you probably will still have a wide variety of products that you're shipping. That means different sizes, different weights, and not always one standardized packaging. For that to be able to have a winner, then the packaging becomes more standard because the you're selling more of the same products. That's the way you can optimize the shipping packaging. The easiest way is adding a logo sticker. A logo sticker, you give us a design, we print the logo sticker, we stick it on each of these uh, packaging. Normally it's a 
white envelope, bubble wrap, with, um, without any Chinese character actually, just to make it very look neutral. But if you want to do customization of your design, of your brand, of the color of the packaging, of course that's an option too. So that's for when you're going to growth. When the third phase comes, just before that third phase comes actually, we recommend you to think about your branding of the product and the product packaging. That's the best stage to do that because then you can actually grow and capture the attention. You know it has a success rate, you know you have the attention, you know you can do volume and then you can optimize and brand your product packaging and your product brand. Why we separate these two? Because a product packaging, you can order maybe 500 packaging, but not the product yet. So these are two different things. The packaging, you can maybe order 500 pieces or 1,000 pieces. Just let it sit with the supplier or with us. And then in the next stage, you can also just do the product branding. That part is normally is much more expensive than just the product packaging. That's why we separate it into two different options. When it comes to your customer experience, when you start to grow, you actually have several options as well to initiate this growth and to go to a maturity. And during the maturity, you need to consider several things. One is definitely bundling, combining different products into one order. That's something that's super important because then your revenue goes up and your margin goes up because the more items in one order, the lower your shipping cost per item and the higher your margin it is. And it also gives a much better brand experience and feeling when the consumer receives multiple products all in one order. That's something important. Another option is putting stock, stock in a warehouse. Why is it relevant? Because the consumer experience is all about speed of delivery. If you have a winning product and you, can, you know you're gonna sell hundreds of pieces or thousands of pieces, put some stock in a warehouse overseas or in China and from there you can just create, generate a much better consumer experience. They're more happy, they're gonna like your product, they're gonna comment, they're gonna promote it to their friends and family and that's exactly what you're trying to reach when you're building a brand. Fourth phase is decline. Unfortunately, all products have an expiration date. At some point, you're gonna sell less. Nobody can prevent that, that's just natural. What you do want to do is try to delay the moment of decline as long as possible. And also, once it starts to decline, to kind of slow that down. So it doesn't just like a straight line down, but more smooth. Options to do that is to sell in other countries. That's definitely one. If you have a winning product, go to other countries and still continue your growth rate. Or you can think about other products within your niche, within your brand that you can sell. We see many Shopify sellers or any drop shippers, they have their one brand store and after that stops, their business stops. They cannot leverage their existing brand name or their ex existing store name. And that's a waste because you build up such loyalty with customers that you want to go and continue with that. So think about how you can extend this customer journey to longer and avoid the decline or reduce the decline. These are the four phases. Again, these four phases, you can find them on Google. They're very common. Introduction, growth, maturity, decline. Try to be aware of where you are. Where are you with your brand and with your store right now? So you can identify which option for customization and branding will be most useful to scale your business. In the end, when you do branding, you want to be unique. You want to be unique, different than AliExpress sellers or any other sellers out there. You want to create something of value that you can scale. You want to create a business, not just online, but also offline. A lot of people want to build a brand and the starting point is dropshipping. You start with dropshipping and then you go somewhere else. You're gonna look for offline channels to be visible to the consumer, not just online by advertising, but just in their face when they go shopping outside. That's in the end, most of the dropshippers dream. So for that, you need an O2O experience, from online to offline or offline to online. Your brand experience needs to be the same as when someone visits your website or your social media, as well as when they receive the order at their doorstep. That's the crucial thing. That's when you build customer loyalty. 
And when you have loyalty, you have repeat orders, you have repeat rebuys, and you actually have a brand that people are gonna recommend. Hope this video is useful. Let us know if you have any questions, reach out. There probably are more options to do this kind of branding. These are the four more common ones in the faces that we identified. Any suggestions you have outside of these options, please do let us know because then we can help our thousands of customers to grow their business as well. Thank you so much and see you on the next one.